Tonight on Tom's River Schools Today, we will take a look at how some students are getting to school around the world. And as always, we have a look at some of the events from around the school district. Tom's River Schools Today starts in two minutes. You're never gonna fit in much, kid But if you're troubled and hurt What you got under your shirt We'll make them pay for the things that they did Schools today for Tuesday, October 24th. I'm Olivia Sorek. And I'm Brittany Minio. Later on tonight, we will check out your weather. But up first tonight, we take a look at our elementary schools and our elementary happening segment. Starting off our elementary happenings, parents, please check your student's website for all important information. Let's take a look at today's random fact of the day. Hi, I'm Matt Abbott with TV21's random fact of the day. Did you know that a gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds for every 2.31 feet that water is raised above the Earth's surface? It can create one pound per square inch of pressure. A brave pup survived a California wildfire after being left behind by his owner, but he was not alone. The dog also led the family's goat to safety. Ed Crane reports. And where his fur was damaged. Meet Odin, the hero of our story. Twelve days ago, Roland and Ariel never thought they would see Odin or the eight goats again, let alone be playing with them. This breed of dog doesn't do tricks. They're, they're livestock guardians. So he sat down and said, I'm not going anywhere. So um, I said, okay, Odie, uh, you know, you take care of them. We'll be back for you. And I went and opened all the gates to the pasture that they were in. Meantime, Odin moved to his breeding, herding the goats one by one into this outcropping of rock where somehow they escaped the flames pretty much unscathed. A few singes of fur here and a toasted paw there. Let's see how it looks. Odin's sister Tess, who made it out with the family, is just fine. As for the kids, the goats don't seem any worse for the wear, and while I'm not a veterinarian, I can tell you this, goats are really hams. And after an hour or so of this indoor goat rodeo, the gang was loaded up for a trip to a nearby animal sanctuary, where our hero Odin and the eight goats he saved will be cared for until Roland can rebuild. And this time, he will fight the enemy of fire with Mother Nature's own weapons. We're going to rebuild out of Earth to try this, uh, um, this Earth bag building which is a very, very old um, uh, uh, building method. If we can get by building codes, and we're going to build in the earth, out of earth, it will be fireproof. We're going to build their barn that way. Where it's hoped Roland, Ariel, Tessa, Odie, and the goats will live happily ever after. It's time to take a trip around the world on our 60-second road trip. Can you guess where we are today? <laughs>
A third grader in Wisconsin who is legally blind has received national recognition for her artwork. Reporter Brooke Schweiters explains how the school district has guided her success. So if we think back to last art class, we continued working on our farmscapes. For Ava Tabbert, a third grader at Longfellow Elementary, being in Mrs. Warner's art class is a favorite part of the day. I started doing that when I was three. You started doing art when you were three? Yeah. Coloring, painting, drawing. That's always been what she gravitates to. Art is her very favorite subject. But for Ava... Okay, so first one. Square. Are we ready? Her art is experienced through touch. Matches that side of it. Yeah. Ava was diagnosed with Lieber's congenital amaurosis at three months old, making her legally blind. But with the help of the school... Longfellow staff has just run with it. I mean, you know, I went in initially in kindergarten and presented her needs, and they're, they're doing it. She's given the tools to succeed. Or in the hot glue gun today. So you put it on? Yep. It's your favorite color, it's orange. orange. I use the hot glue gun a lot. Once she makes a picture, I go over the lines so she can feel the textile of her lines and put in the picture. And create art that has received national recognition. Last weekend, Ava and her family traveled to Louisville for the American Printing House for the Blind's Insights Art Contest, where she received second place for her piece called Giraffe. In award, Ava's support system shows pride in. We're all so proud of her because that's really huge to have her rewarded for something that she loves so much. But at the end of the day can be recognized by the special third grader behind it. I mean, she's just, yeah, I mean, she's, she's Ava. Yeah. She kind of marches her, to the, her own beat. And yeah. She is a go-getter. She's spunky, um, has a curiosity for anything. So she loves to learn, um, loves to outsmart people, and um, she'll go far. It is now time for us to take a look at Dictionary.com's Word of the Day. Today's word is pelf, meaning money and riches. And now for your sentence of the day. After attacking the ship, the pirates obtained the pelf on board. Now we're going to take a short break, but coming up, we take a look at our intermediate happenings. And also, we take a look at your weather. So stick around. We'll be right back. Debbie, I only had 12. <laughs> Seems to be the problem, Ossifer. So have you been drinking tonight? back starting off our intermediate happenings at intermediate east any eighth grader interested in applying to the stop team please stop by a204 for an application mrs newhoff's sewing classes are making kindness pumpkins in class 
The pumpkins are made of fabric and will feature uplifting messages. The students will be giving out their pumpkins to friends, teachers, and school staff to help brighten someone's day. One message at the right moment can change someone's life. Intramurals are in the gym after school until late bus. You must have a sports physical cleared by the district doctor in order to participate. See the school nurses with any questions. If you need an ID, please let your homeroom teacher inform Mrs. Gallucci in the main office. IDs are $3, lanyards are $1, and cases are $2. IDs are free for new students. Our club for 7th and 8th graders will be with Ms. Norton until late bus. If you would like to join, there is a sign-up sheet outside of B2. 6th grade art club will start in February. Do you enjoy learning about the world, the places, and the people on it? If yes, then join the Geography Club. Our first meeting will be this Wednesday after school until late bus in room C11. If you have any questions, stop by and speak to Ms. Carr. All are welcome to attend. It is now time for our environmental tip of the day. Each day we will bring you a tip that will help save the environment. Let's take a look at today's tip. Hi, my name is Michaela Javaris with your environmental tip of the day. Put it to sleep. If you'll be away from your computer for more than 20 minutes, change it to sleep mode. Every day on this show, we will be bringing you a tip of the day. So stay tuned tomorrow as we give you another way to help save the environment. Some wildfire evacuees in California are taking their first look this weekend at what's left of their homes, but they're also making sure to say thank you to the firefighters who fought to save their houses. Cornell Barnard reports from Santa Rosa. Firefighters came for pancakes. What each of them got was a standing ovation. How could you not be grateful for somebody who's worked so hard for you? First responders were guest of honor at this pancake breakfast hosted by Boy Scout Troop 32 in Santa Rosa. Donations were collected for fire victims. This day gave thanks to those who battled the firestorm. It really chokes me off to see this level of support for all our departments. Just driving down the highway, seeing every, every overpass is just covered with signs. It's really touching. Homeowners are returning to their Fountain Grove neighborhood for the first time. We raised our two kids here. Alan and Norico Williams can't believe the place they called home is now rubble. It was unbelievable, even just driving up the parkway and seeing everybody's home. You know, all these homes that have been here, we've lived here for 18 years. Some keepsake Christmas decorations and a garden statue are all that's been salvaged so far. More than 30 homes on this street reduced to ashes. Some neighbors still finding signs of life on their property, like this fish pond. Somehow, these miniature koi survived the fire. Neighbor Laureen Worley found this silver serving fork, a wedding gift. We just wanted a couple little nuggets and this is one of those. This might even just be enough right here. Residents must show ID to return to their properties. The Williams vow to return one day. We're going to rebuild here and stay because this is, this is our home. They say that could take years. In Santa Rosa, Cornell Bernard, ABC 7 News. It is now time for another break. Coming up later in the show, we will take a look at your high school happenings. Tom's River Schools today will be right back.
but the pussy don't care. Ah, oh, if you live or if you die. But I've never touched nothing mm -hmm, that my spirit could kill. You know I've seen a lot of people walking around with tombstones in their eyes. Starting off our high school happenings, attention students and staff, the school store is now open to serve you. We are stocked with all your Raider apparel needs, including Champion and Under Armour brands. The school store is open every day after school from 1.40 to 2 p.m. We also have Yoohoo, Snapple, and water for $1 for your after school practices. Stop in soon. It's time to get Raiderized. The robotics team will meet every Wednesday and Thursday after school in S21 until 3.30. The computer club will meet every Tuesday after school in S21 until 2.30. High School East, did you know that 3 million students are absent each month because they feel unsafe at school? Make a difference in someone's life today by making a new friend, sitting with a new group at lunch, or joining a new club or sport. Need a little help with your college entrance essays? Having difficulty with that research paper, or would you just like another set of eyes to proofread your assignments? The Writing Center provides tutors to help with all types of writing assignments. The Writing Center is now open every Tuesday and Thursday after school in W20. Ask your English teacher for further details. Let's now take a look at what grinds our gears. I'm Lex Bischoff, and what grinds my gears is when people drive really slow. It's now time for us to take a short break. After the break, we take a look at your three-day forecast. Tom's River Schools today will be right back. Hi, do you have ID? Yep. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Let's now take a look at our three-day forecast. Coming tomorrow, the, the sun will be back with a high of 65 and low of 43. For Thursday, it will be partly cloudy with a high of 61 and low of 40. And finally, for Friday, the sun sticks around with a high of 64 and a low of 48. And wrapping up tonight's show, man's best friend, an Ohio police officer, noticed there was something wrong with his canine. But thanks to a medical diagnosis and a generous community, the two are still together. Peggy Galler reports. So when you got the news that he would have to retire, how devastating was that for you? Um, that was probably the worst feeling I've ever felt. Um, there's, there's nothing like 
possibly losing your partner. This is University Hospital's police officer, Matt Suster, talking about his former work partner, General. We met about two years ago, and we've been together since. We've been you know, working together at UH. But a few months ago, Suster noticed General wasn't acting right. When we went to get in the car that night, he jumped in, and when he jumped in, he yelped. So I, I knew that it hurt. So after several trips to the veterinarian, General was sent to get more tests. We went and got an MRI down in Akron, and that's what revealed the uh, lumbosacral stenosis. This is a genetic disorder which causes the nerves in his back to be pinched and cause pain. Suster knew General would not be able to work. He can be fine as a house pet. He can do any kind of like low impact work or things like that where it's just, you know, your normal everyday stuff. He just can't do the kind of things that we need him to do as a canine. Suster learned he would either need to return General so the department can get a replacement dog or pay $5,000 out of pocket to keep him. Giving General up was not an option. It's kind of like trying to give up one of your kids. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> Suster started a GoFundMe account to raise the money. And in just a few days, he had the cash he needed to keep General. And any additional money he receives will be used to help others in similar situations. Hopefully we can help out some other retired canines. So they, too, will be able to stay with their best friend. He's a pretty good boy, huh? In Cleveland, Peggy Gallick, Fox 8 News. Remember, if you have a story you'd like us to cover, or if you have an announcement about an upcoming event, please send it to Inner School Mail at, to the TV21 studio at High School East, or you can email us at tv21 at trschools.com. Also, be sure to tune in TV21 throughout the day to catch this show as we bring you stories from around the district. Also, please take a look at our website, www.trschools.com slash tv21. Well, that wraps up tonight's show. For Tom's Over Schools today, I'm Brittany Minio. And I'm Olivia Torek. Have a great night.